good morning students class 11 welcome to the biology class so we have finished with the chapter 1 where we have dealt with the what are the characteristics of the living organism now last class we have learned with the chapter 2 that is biological classification and in that we are uh, studying about the five kingdom classification which has been classified by the wh whitaker so last class we have seen uh, the first classification that is the first kingdom of the whitaker that is the kingdom monera and though you have seen uh, the different types of bacteria that is divided into two categories the first one is the archibacteria and the second one is the eubacteria and you have seen the difference and the types of this bacteria the archibacteria means the bacteria that we have to see can see in the harsh condition yeah extreme condition okay and the eubacteria means that is a true bacteria that is a bacteria that we normally see in our surrounding so that kingdom is over now the second kingdom that we are going to discuss today according to wh whitaker is the kingdom protista and the one thing we have seen in the first kingdom it was all prokaryotic organism now starting from the protista we are going to the eukaryotic organism so that's a major difference so from prokaryotic organism you are going to the eukaryotic organism okay so we have to deal with the protista in this class i think uh, you understood the first kingdom that is the kingdom monera and their general characteristics all are doing well and have a nice day and stay home and stay safe okay but you have to go through your chapters you have to go through this online video along with your ncert book i think you all have this ncert book with you and if you don't have the ncert book please because this is 11th standard they might have facing this problem of not having the book so you please download it from the uh, cbsc website i have sent the link already so you can take that uh, file and you can refer to the ncert book okay so let's come to the topic so today's topic is about the kingdom protista so first of all see what are the general characteristics that is coming under the kingdom protista so the first thing the first point that we have to see they are the single celled but they are eukaryotes okay and they are primarily aquatic you have to Uh, learn the identifying characters they are primarily aquatic and uh, what else we can say they have prokaryotic to eukaryote so what is the definition of a eukaryotic organism they have a well defined nucleus they have the membrane bound organelles okay there's a main differentiating part of a prokaryotic from a eukaryotic organism in prokaryotes they don't have the proper nucleus they don't have any uh, cell bound membranes but here in eukaryotes we can see a proper nucleus is there and also the presence of the membrane bound organelles okay now the protists they some of them will reproduce uh, asexually and some of them by sexual reproduction by the fusion as well as by the gamete formation okay so these are some of the examples that is coming under the protista so you have to deal with all these categories in the protista i have given the picture of a slime mold then amoeba then euglena then dinoflagellate then paramecium is here and the diatoms and the this macro okay these are some of the pictures of the protista now let's see uh, the different groups that is coming under the so the kingdom protista we are going to divide into uh, five groups which are the five groups first one is called as the chrysophytes the second one is called as a dinoflagellate then the third one is a euglenoids then fourth one slime molds and the fifth one is a protozoa and i have written here the main identifying character so this chrysophytes then dinoflagellates then euglenoids they are photosynthetic protists okay photosynthesis means they can prepare their own food material and the slime molds they are the saprophytic protists and the protozoans they are some of them are the predators and some of them are parasitic i think this uh, demarcation is clear for you might be you find little bit difficulty in learning this term this are something new for you chrysophytes then dinoflagellates then euglenoids then slime molds and the protozoans now we have to learn the identifying characters of the chrysophytes and which are the members that is coming under each and every group so let's go to the chrysophytes group so this is the chrysophyte and i given you the picture of a chrysophyte this is looking like a golden color okay and this is also called as the golden algae that's why i put this pic here 
so that you can easily identify this is the golden algae okay so this group mainly contain di atoms and the golden algae and the other name of the golden algae is desmids and what is their habitat they can be found in fresh water some of them can be found in marine environment and they are all microscopic that means you cannot uh, see with your naked eyes clear now float passively in the water current so they are the floating ones so you call it as a plankton and most of them are the photosynthetic we told that they are all photosynthetic now another identifying characters uh, actually this one having a cell wall and the cell wall fits like this can you see here and can you identify this structure is actually the like looking like a soap box we have a, a lower part and we have an upper part it's like a lid so it's looking like this so they having a thin overlapping shell and they fit each other like a soap box there are no gaps here it fits like a soap box okay and this walls of this box is made up of the silica now what happens when these diatoms die so the organism died and this walls of this uh, atom diatoms were lying on the floor of the uh, sea and this forms and the accumulation of this large number of the diatoms over millions of years it will form a special kind of deposition called the diatomaceous earth understand what i'm telling it's look like a soap box that is fitted with each other and the walls have been abandoned with silica so this covering have been abandoned with silica and after the death of this organism it's not one or two diatoms there are millions of diatoms here there are thousands of diatoms are there and what will happen after their death this walls get accumulated in one place and this deposit of the silica will get increased and this deposit is called as the diatomaceous earth clear yeah. and this is a silica so what will happen there is a gritty appearance for this and what is the application of this diatomaceous earth it is a widely applied widely used in the industrial purpose like for the purpose of polishing for the filtration purpose okay so this has been used for polish you have seen the people polishing the uh, walls of your houses so what is that uh, paper so sand paper so what is that made up of it's actually from the uh, silica okay it's actually from the diatomaceous earth and this diatoms actually they are the chief producers of the oceans i think clear so we can see the characteristics so i already defined there are two overlapping shell and they are fitting like a soap box and their walls contain the deposit of the silica and after their death the diatoms have been uh, large amounts of these uh, diatom silica have been deposited and this deposition is called as a diatomaceous earth and what is the nature of this one they are the gritty so what are the uses they are used for polishing filtration of oils and the syrups and they are the chief producers of the ocean i think that clear the identifying characters of the this group these are the diatomaceous can you see the picture the picture is very clear for you so here i am showing the diatoms and they are the so box like structures and here this is the diatomaceous earth can you see this one so this is a diatomaceous earth and this is widely used for the industrial purpose now come to the second group that is called as a dinoflagellate okay uh, i have given a picture of a dinoflagellate and what's the nature of this water you can see that this is looking like a green red color here and this is normally called as a red tide okay and what is the reason behind this uh, red tide this is because of a dinoflagellate of course the color of the dinoflagellate is red in color and the name of that dinoflagellate is gonialex okay so because of the increase in the number of the gonialex in some time the sea appears to be the red and this phenomena you will refer to as the red tide so i want to show you the picture that's why i added this picture here of the red tide you you can see here the red color so this is called as the red tide okay now let's see what are the characteristics of the dinoflagellate the word itself is clear dinoflagellate so what do you mean by the word dinoflagellate two flagella okay so let's see the other characters they are mostly marine and they are photosynthetic and they appear sometimes they have the yellow color green brown blue or the red and they depending upon the pigments that is present in their cell and their cell wall contains the cellulosic plates and how many flagella the dinoflagellates means they having the two flagella okay 
Now, uh, this picture that is of the red tide, you can learn the name that is Gonialex. This Gonialex is having the red tide phenomena because their color is red in color. So, uh, they are appearing like the red color and that is called as the red tide. So, this phenomena is called as the red tide. And their toxins, they have been releasing. They can kill the other marine animals, especially the fish. Clear? I'm showing the video of a red tide. It's very nice to see how this red tide appears. What causes red tides? Why crimson seas are not as unbelievable a sight as you might first think. A red tide is the rapid accumulation of a mass of aquatic algae can see here red color. of mobile single-celled microorganisms known as dinoflagellates, which means whirling whip due to the nature of the tail-like projections that propel them through the water. The algae See grows how beautiful the more picture. rapidly than usual in order to consume nutrients that have suddenly risen up from the colder depths of the ocean below. The red hue is down to the presence of a certain species of dinoflagellate or phytoplankton. Together with the more abundant diatom algae, dinoflagellates make up the majority of ocean plankton. Despite the rather see. startling appearance of the sea, you can see in between the sea, you red, can see the red color. That is the red tide. Harmless. However, you shouldn't consume seafood following a red tide. A certain phytoplankton can release harmful substances into the water. Some dinoflagellates can produce toxins when eaten by other creatures, and the harmful substances then concentrate inside the creatures that feed see on the them. See the red color. Okay, so this picture is very nice. So. You might have seen how the red tide appears. Now, the next group that is coming here is the euglenoids. Okay, I think you are learning in the class 9, yeah, 8, the structure of the euglena and all. So, here I given the picture of a euglena. You can see the picture, how, the, how it looks like a euglena. Now, let's see what are the general characteristics. Freshwater, you have to uh, learn to identify characters by writing the points and will, it will be easy for you to remember. Okay. And they are normally found in the stagnant water. What do you mean by stagnant water? The water that doesn't move. Clear? Now, instead of a cell wall, they have a proteinaceous covering. And that proteinaceous covering, you will call it as pellicle. And because of this pellicle, their body is flexible. Okay. If pellicle is, the pellicle is not there and a hard covering is there, it will not be flexible. Like diatoms, they are not flexible. But here, their body is made up of the pellicle so that they are having a flexible nature. They are photosynthetic in the presence of the sunlight. So, if the sunlight is available, they do the process of photosynthesis and if sunlight is not there, then they act as heterotrophs. They act as heterotrophs and they feed on the other organism. And uh, this, uh, the pigments that is present in this euglenoids group, they resemble that of the higher plants. Okay. So, you can see the picture of the euglena and you can identify what are the identifying characters? So, main identifying character is that their body is having a covering called the pellicle. And because of this pellicle, they are having a flexible type of body. Now, the next one is slime molds. So, we have seen in the starting, the slime molds are the saprophytic protein. So, what is the saprophytes? The organism that depend upon the dead and decaying matter to get their food. Clear? Now, their body, you can see the identifying characters, their body moves along the twigs and the leaves and they can engulf the organic material. Clear? And uh, the form an aggregation, aggregation matlab the grouping. They form a grouping and that group organism, you will call it as the plasmodium. Okay. And during unfavorable condition, uh, they produce some kind of fruiting bodies. And inside this fruiting body, there will be the spore. So, it's like a fruiting body and inside the fruiting body, you can see inside this fruiting body, the spores are there. And what will happen? This fruiting body will open and the spores will be coming out. Okay. And this spores, if they are not getting the proper, uh, what you can say, uh, the proper conditions, they will not be uh, germinating. They will not be dispersed. They can survive in that condition for a long time. And they normally disperse. The spores have been dispersed normally by the air current. So, these are the general characteristics of a picture of a slime mold. It has been grown in a nutrient uh, plate. You can see here a plate is there. So, normally we grow for studying this kind of organism. We make a nutrient medium and in the nutrient medium we apply the spores and the spores will grow and we can see the picture of the slime mold. Okay.
it's clear i think now comes the next part that is the protozoan that also we have seen uh, some of them are the predators some of them are the parasites so uh, can you identify this picture that i have given here yes that is the picture of the paramecium well, how normally we identify it is having a slipper shape so this is a picture of the paramecium and this is coming under the protozoan so what are the general characteristics of course they are the heterotrophs and some of them are predators or the parasites okay now this protozoan is again divided into amoeboid protozoans then flagellated protozoans then ciliated protozoans and the sporozoans this is again an important question like what are the different categories of the protozoan and we have to deal with these uh, four categories in detail like amoeboid protozoan then flagellated protozoan then ciliated Uh, this word is clear amoeba it looks like amoeba flagellated those who are having the flagella then ciliated that means they are having the cilia and uh, the sporozoan okay so let's see one by one which are the what are the characteristics of the amoeboid protozoans i'm given the picture also of an amoeba so amoeboid protozoan we have to learn so these organism they live in fresh water then the sea water or the moist soil and uh, uh, what is the main feature of this amoeba we have learned already they are having a uh, what you can say false feet or you will call it as a pseudopodia okay and what they will do with the pseudopodia they can take they can engulf if this is a pseudopodia if this is a pseudopodia they can engulf this food material using the pseudopodia okay and they can change the shape so these are the find uh, tiny projections from their body these are the tiny projection and when the food materials food particles comes near the amoeba what they will do they will gradually engulf the food material now where is the food material it is inside this amoeba and they undergo the process of phagocytosis okay here also you can see the picture they are the pseudopodia or the false feet and some of them such as endamoeba they are acting as the parasite clear yeah? now the next group is the flagellated of course we can say that what is the main identifying character they have the presence of the flagella and some of them are the free living or some of them are parasites and this parasite one example of the parasite that has been given here that is called as a trypanosome and this trypanosoma they causes a disease called the sleeping sickness okay so amoeboid protozoan you can uh, remember the picture of an amoeba and the flagellated protozoan with the flagella the identifying characteristic they have a flagella and most of them are the parasite and one example has been given here that is causing the disease called the sleeping sickness and this sleeping sickness is because of the uh, flagellated protozoan the name of that protozoan is trypanosoma now see the next one that is the ciliated protozoan can we see the picture here they are having the cilia throughout their body they are having the cilia uh, the best example we can have is the paramecium that already have shown the picture the uh, now what are the different characteristics of this group they are aquatic so first character is they are aquatic they are actively moving and uh, presence of thousands of the cilia okay and here you can see the structure there is a a uh, depression structure here that you will call it as the gullet cavity gullet and that will open to the outer surface so that they can collect their food material and the digestion will takes place because they contain some of the powerful hydrolytic enzyme inside their body with the help of these enzyme they can digest the food material they can absorb the useful substances and they can reject the waste material okay so this is the structure we can see the different part here so this is a cavity this is the most important part this is a cavity and we can see a flagella it's not uh, so clear here but you can see the hair like growths have been shown here so this is the cilia throughout the body there is the cilia and this cilia helps in the movement of that organism and the best example you have to remember is about the paramecium okay now next comes the last group they are the again infectious group that is called as the sporozoans if you know the disease called the malaria you might have heard about the disease called as a malaria now what we are what is malaria actually that is caused by the plasmodium okay and uh, plus you will learn in detail in class 12 
and the plasmodium requires two hosts one is a human host and other one is a mosquito host clear so this plasmodium belongs to the sporozoan so we know that that is an infectious stage and there are the spore stages in this and that causes the malaria and two hosts are required one is a human host and other one is the uh, mosquito host so there are two like gametocytes are the sporozoites are the so these are the infective stages these are the spore stages by which it will infect a new organism okay so these are the sporozoan so total there are four groups here so what is the first group that is the amoeboid the second one the protozoans are divided first one is the amoeboid one then comes the flagellated ones then comes the ciliated one that is the third one is the ciliated one and the fourth one is the sporozoan i think uh, the division of the protista is clear for you so once again we can say what are the different uh, creatures yeah what are the different categories so first one what is the first one that is a chrysophyte okay uh, the second one what is the second one that is a dinoflagellate now what is the third one that is a euglenoids and the fourth one that is a slime molds then fifth one protozoan and in the protozoan again it is divided into four categories first one is amoeboid protozoan second one is flagellated protozoan third one is ciliated protozoan and the last one is the sporozoan okay so uh, some of the terms that we are using here is uh, entirely new for you the only thing we can do is repeat it many times if you don't know the spelling write it write and practice okay because i am taking only very small syllables so that you will be used to these terms because we have to use these terms in the further chapter so you have to be clear after being clear only we have to go to the next topic okay so you have to learn the identifying characters make a note put points write the notes properly and then you it's not that mugging up you have to identify the character first of all you visualize that picture in your mind how these organism looks like by visualizing that's why i put lots of pictures here by visualizing the pictures it is easy for you to recognize okay this group is having flagella the organism is in front of you and you are identifying the character so that is the best part that you can do take your copy <coughs> immediately you take your copy start writing the notes write the points and if you want you draw one organism there so that it will be easy for you for the identification process okay now next class we will deal with the next phylum next kingdom that is the kingdom fungi so still now we are discussing about bitacus classification okay rh bitacus who classify the whole world of animals into five categories five kingdoms kingdom protista kingdom monera these two are over now three has been left one is a kingdom fungi then kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia okay so next class we will deal with the fungi up to that time you please be clear with all these terms and there is no difficult words here i explained all the meanings of these words the only thing you have to do is that just learn the terms like dinoflagellate euglenoids chrysophytes uh, then slime molds protozoan so you have to be familiar with this words might be you need more repetition it's okay fine you have enough time to revise this chapters i think the topics is clear for you take your ncrt book and start revising along with this video thank you students have a nice